Uh, how many people have an automotive vehicle, a car, something like that? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> Pretty much everybody in the room, okay. For most families, the automotive vehicle, the care, the maintenance that you do is the second most biggest expense that you have. So it's really, really important for all of us. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit today about how we built a GeoWare automotive care platform on Cockroach over the last year. Um, just a little bit about ShopMonkey. We are in 6,000 automotive retail locations. So if you go in to get a car, uh, you know, oil change, your tires, et cetera, you're probably using our software in that store and interacting with it. Our focus really solely is to help every um, automotive care retail location shop owner thrive. We do that providing pretty much everything that the shop needs to run, everything from the front office, the point of sale, the communication with the customer, uh, the quoting, et cetera, all the way to the back office, their transactions, their accounting, their parts procurement inventory, et cetera. We, we like to think of ourselves as the operating system for the entire uh, retail automotive location. We're growing really fast. We're adding about two to 300 new locations every single month. It's an incredible space. Um, I've, I've been here a little over a year now. There are 350,000 automotive retail locations in North America, in the US and Canada. It's massive. If you drive down the, car, uh, the road next time, just pay attention to how many automotive locations there are. It's, it's insane. It's a really huge opportunity. Um, it's also a very non-digital business. Most of the businesses are still pen and paper. So it's the first time they're actually leveraging technology to transform their business. So it's a really significant opportunity for us. Before Cockroach, I joined a little over a year and a half ago. Um, we have this really, um, like any startup that's in hyperscale, we have this um, pretty insane um, architecture we call V1. It's got a little bit of everything, like a lot of startups that are scaling really fast. It was run in a single region, AWS, even though our customers spread all over the United States and Canada. Um, the primary data source is Mongo. We also had a little bit of Postgres, so every microservice had their own Postgres database. Uh, Elasticsearch, you can see where we're going here probably. Uh, multiple different ORM frameworks. Every developer got to choose their own framework, uh, which is always really fun. Dozens and dozens of microservices to stitch all these things together using Kafka. Um, so pretty much, like I think the other guy was saying a little while ago, just a ton of different things that you know, we call this technical debt. Um, the company is scaling really fast. Uh, really suffering from data consistency, scaling problems, um, just all kinds of things. So we really thought we've got to change this. This is not going to scale. We're going to be at uh, 10,000 stores in the next year and a year or so, um, and we're we're really um, we're putting billions of dollars of transactions through our platform, going to about 30 billion in the next two or three years. Um, we have to really change what we're doing and really rethink our entire architecture. And that really fundamentally started with the database. So we did a pretty extensive search, like a lot of companies probably here today. Um, we went out, we looked at the market and said, uh, we have a really unique set of requirements and that our locations are physical. So most of our customers, most of our users or application are doing that inside of a physical store. They're not uh, roaming around the internet. Uh, that, produces lots of interesting challenges and opportunities. So what we've done, um, we run Cockroach, we're using the managed Cockroach dedicated services. We run it in three super regions right now, three nodes per uh, AZ. So nine total Cockroach nodes right now. Each region has our full entire stack uh, and every region is independent. So we can sort of fail entirely, uh, one full region can fully fail over and we can continue operating uh, theoretically. Um, with no interruption, but that required a whole bunch of different uh, des design decisions we had to make, architecture design uh, decisions we had to make. So I'll go through just a few. Um, each shop is a physical location, so we can assign each location to a CRDB region, so which is really a really nice property. We basically measure the distance at onboarding from the shop's physical geolocation to the nearest region. Um, and then we use that to set the region uh, field in a location table. So every, most of our tables have a CRDB region table, they're regional by row, and this location during onboarding tags that customer physical location to one of those regions. So for example, GCP US East 1, which would be the East Coast if you're in Atlanta, for example, or uh, maybe North Carolina, you're gonna be in the GCP US East region. Now that, that's a technicality, um, it has some really nice attributes because we can do nice uh, load distribution effects. So if we needed to move load or shift load across the country, let's say we, we were having maybe too many customers in one region, we, could, we had a little less customers in another region, we could easily reassign the region and reshift the data and move the data. So that's a really nice uh, effect for us. Most of our data is um, 
that is mostly um, read only, we put in global tables, about 30-ish percent of our data is global tables. Um, for example, we have a vehicle database that has the taxonomy of pretty much every vehicle ever made, every combination of make, uh, year, make, model, uh, uh, sub, uh, sub engine, transmission, et cetera, every kind of attribute of a unique uh, vehicle instance. Um, that's global, doesn't change very often. Uh, only once a year do new cars come out. Um, so that's a global table, it's available in every region. We use that to kind of look up tables uh, and, and, and match sort of incoming vehicles. The benefit is all that data is in, in all those regions. That's made a really big uh, performance boost for us. Uh, of course, you have to make sure that's infrequently written. You don't want to make those global tables be written a lot. The other big change that we've made on the uh, regional by row is that all tables must contain the CRDB region. We ran into a lot of problems over the last uh, number of months um, where we had this mismatch. We were doing it at the application layer. We were mapping which, uh, for a given, let's say, write or read, we were mapping which location was the request for, uh, and then we would, uh, we would put that in our filter and our where clause. Um, that sometimes worked, most of the time worked, but it depended on the developer to actually do the right thing. So we had a pro tip, thanks to the uh, Cockroach team, we added CRDB region to the foreign key constraint, and pretty much all of our, all of those issues went away, um, and you couldn't accidentally write the wrong region. We had a bunch of mismatches where we had table rows that mismatched, and, and then they wouldn't show up at all because they were in the filter. So another really big uh, tip that we found, it, perf it uh, massively increased performance as well, um, the explain analyze your friend, especially on distributed regional by row tables. We have a, a, a lot of fairly complex tables, sometimes may have 50 joins um, in, in one query, for example. We have a lot of data we're trying to uh, uh, join, and making sure those distributed SQL queries aren't going to different regions is really, really important. So how do we route data? Um, so what happens is we use, uh, we're deployed on Google, cloud. Um, we use Google uh, Geo Load Balancers, so we use the Magloff protocol to route to the closest location of the client, um, and then each login token, the JWT authentication token, actually has the region ID for that location. So um, every request going through any of our data centers automatically pins the region and then will route to the right region automatically. And then each one of our regions has our full entire stack. So any of our regions, you know, we can route to any one of them. So even if you land on the wrong region, for example, in a, in a DR scenario, disaster scenario, we can still route, for example, to let's say US East can still take uh, traffic to U US Central or US West. Uh, but obviously it's going to prefer the, the closest region possible. And so that's shown sort of here. So in any case, if we need to move data around automatically, that happens thanks to Cockroach and a number of other components that we use. Uh, during an outage, we can also shift load if we need to. So if we need it as, let's say, we are having problems um, or maybe even just capacity constraints, we can shift between uh, different regions if we need to. And this way, kind of the regions are forming a mesh. A few other critical components we found that Cockroach by itself um, required a lot of different tools and a lot of different things to be built that, that um, wasn't just the database to make all this stuff work together. Um, just a few other things that we put in place uh, over the last year. Connection pooling has been a really big issue for us. Uh, we built a, a special built connection pooler that sits between our, our services and Cockroach. Uh, we call it data proxy. Um, it handles prepared statement. We found that throughout the day, most of the shop queries are, uh, are mostly the same. The parameters might change, but the queries themselves. So we actually did very, very heavy uh, prepared statement caching in our data proxy layers. Our services could come up and down and auto scale, but those, uh, they would connect generally to the same um, data proxy pool, and then they could reuse those statements. We could also do intelligent caching, uh, connection pooling itself, et cetera. We had also phenomenal telemetry. I'll show you in a few examples in a minute. Um, but we also put in a lot of telemetry from our application. Every query going through our infrastructure, um, we also add additional telemetry and tracing, which was really helpful for tuning and finding problems. Um, we also put in the intelligent serializable retry um, logic in the data proxy, so it really helped us when we were um, having retry events that we needed to do with Cockroach, which you will have in a, in a system like this a lot. PG Bouncer is another popular um, OSS option. We didn't uh, end up using it because we needed some, to do some special things between our uh, kind of our ORM framework and Cockroach, and so we uh, opted to build our own. We're a very heavy user of change feeds. 
Uh, we built a pretty significant custom infrastructure around change feeds. We, we, we do everything with change feeds pretty much, um, all the way to our mobile applications, to our desktop applications, et cetera. Um, each change feed um, is streamed in real time from Cockroach into um, NATS. We use NATS Jetstream as our um, uh, global uh, queue. And um, any consumer in our network, all the way to our mobile app and our desktop app, can actually consume real-time change data coming from the database. Um, and so they can all subscribe to the same types of uh, messages happening, side effects happening in the database. So as an example, the way this works, um, we use the uh, webhook service, so we stream data coming out of our various uh, cockroach clusters uh, into this change feed service that we built. Um, that just basically does some, um, some packaging of the data, some validation of the data, and then it publishes into a NAS, a, a NAS Jetstream DB change stream. Um, and then we have various services. So we maybe have 300 plus uh, change stream services that can consume various messages and, and do different things. This is a good example. Um, if you update an order, for example, we have a lot of different side effects that might happen in an order like authorization, et cetera. Um, this is an example where we actually need to send an SMS message that you have an authorization of an order, and we might want to also send an email depending on the user subscription. Um, so those are the types of side effects that all can happen as a reaction to the DB change event. Um, so it's a really, really nice um, system. Migrations is another really big uh, hurdle that we had to jump over. When we first started working with Cockroach, um, the local dev migrations would take somewhere between five and 10 minutes to apply one little change. You know, we might want to add a column, uh, add a foreign key, um, and that change could take a long time to apply locally um, for lots of different reasons. So um, when we went to deploy these online migrations in production, sometimes they would take 30 minutes to apply these changes. So that was just really way, way too long. So we ended up building a custom tool called Wrench. Um, if you're not notice, all of our tools are in some ways named around, uh, you know, automotive. Um, so we, we, um, we basically built an online migration tool that applies the diff. It looks at the database uh, and it uses a bunch of the, on, uh, the internal CRDB tables. It looks at our um, declarative schema and it can reconcile and create a SQL diff and apply that change. So uh, we went from having maybe five to 10 minute uh, ch small schema changes locally to literally seconds to make that change. And cloud changes could really easily be rolled out and, and instead of trying to do offline migrations or doing migrations in the evening or trying to batch a bunch of migrations together, uh, we now just, all of our migrations are done in real time. Uh, we roll out a PR, it rolls all the migrations out, applies the database changes, applies everything that needs to happen and then rolls it out to production in, in real time. The way this works, um, is like I said, it just the wrench tool in, in development mode, it, it watches basically your local dev changes for your schema, and then it, and then it, it re resolves what changes need to be applied to your database and applies them. Um, and, and in production, basically, it, uh, it does the same thing, but obviously it does it more in an offline mode. It actually creates a migration and applies it to the database as the rollout happens. So this is a good example. This is just a screenshot of our local dev using, we run a three node cluster locally. So every developer runs kind of a small three node cockroach cluster in their Docker container, along with several of our other tools and services. So in this case, um, when you're running Docker locally, it's watching your schema file and applying those changes live. So in this example, I'm gonna make a small schema change here. Uh, and then you can see down here in the bottom, it's applying that schema change, it's making an alter statement to apply. It can do rollbacks, it can pretty much do anything you can, uh, you can sort of do to the schema. It also is nice because we enforce a bunch of uh, business rules. We don't allow certain things to happen in our schema. Um, for example, you can't, make, you can't go from one, you know, you can't say something's um, uh, optional and then make it re uh, required, for example. So we, it applies some business rules. What's nice about the um, PR deployment, so the thing that's actually gonna go to production is each PR also has on the PR, wrench will actually create a diff in this case. Uh, it'll tell you if it has any uh, impacts to the database um, and it'll run a diff against the um, you know, staging database, validate it, and then apply that diff to the PR so you can actually see what's gonna happen. The other big thing that we found was tracing and correlation. Like any distributed system is really, really difficult if you don't have distributed um, tracing and logging set up. Um, this is our main, um, one of our main activity screens that a service rider would see. They would see the vehicle, they'd see all the services. Um, I've just pulled up um, the web inspector here to show you. Every one of our requests going through our infrastructure carries a unique request ID. 
uh, tracing ID. It also has some additional information, which region did it go to, different infrastructure that it follows through, um, you know, different pods that it might travel through, et cetera. So it makes it really easy for us to trace from the end customer all the way back. So we can take this ID here, this unique ID, um, and we can go into something like Google Cloud. We can place that into Google Cloud logging, uh, and you can see across, uh, we have distributed logging across every one of our components, including our data proxy, all the way into Cockroach, actually, which I'll show you in a minute. So we can plug that in and see every, literally everything is happening all through our infrastructure, all the various uh, pieces of our components. That was really critical. Before we had this, it was really impossible to figure out what was going on. Uh, just a lot of trying to dig through logs and across the different things to figure out what components are happening. So this really made a huge difference. Here's a great example of a fairly complicated query that we have, and we even, we even took, um, nice part about Cockroach being open source, we took the fingerprinting of, of the SQL statements that show up in the activity console in Cockroach, and we actually lifted that code out, pulled it into our own data proxy code, and we actually will generate the fingerprint that will show up in Cockroach as well. So if a developer's trying to, if they found a query or they found an issue, they can actually take that fingerprint and go right into Cockroach and find that uh, query, find the explain pan, et cetera, and do some different things with it, which is really nice. Uh, and here's just another example. We even have uh, pod information, um, all kinds of information to show you everything that's happening through our network, which has been pretty critical. Okay, in summary, Cockroach makes it really easy for you to provide GeoWare database in a highly, uh, highly scalable manner. It's, it's probably the only database out there we've been able to find that can do this at scale. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal product. But it does require you to think differently. Um, you know, I, I've known several uh, speakers have talked about this. It's not a Postgres database just running geo, uh, geo distributed. It's, it's differently, it's a different way to think about your database design, your schema, your tooling. Um, you know, how, how requests are routed, et cetera. You have to think differently. And that did require us to really help our developers to think differently about the product. They couldn't just do the same old thing. Even how we plan queries and how we index queries um, had to be totally, totally done differently. But it does provide um, huge opportunities from our perspective that traditional databases just can't provide. So it's been a huge, huge success for us, and we're really excited to be partnering with Cockroach. Thank you.